Hi folks, the Filipino View here. And today I've got a most unusual story about a Canadian man named John. He knew nothing about the Philippines, but met a woman named Jessa on a dating site. And six months later, after only spending a month together in person, they were married. But there's another wrinkle to the story. John was 59 and Jessa was only 21. How did his children react? What did her family think? What reaction did it get from Canadians when they walked down the street arm in arm? Did they truly love each other or were there other motivations at play? John did every single thing I advise foreigners not to do. So what happened? Get ready for the answer. Hi, John and Jessa. Welcome to my channel. How are you guys doing? Very nice. Thank you. All right. So I'm so excited to uh, to know your story. Let's start from the beginning. So, Jessa, what age were you when you first met John, your husband? 21 years old, sweet and young. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how about you, John? How old were you when you first met Jessa? Well, I was an antique at the age of 59. <laughs> 59? Oh my gosh. Really? You were like um, almost three times older than her. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, yes, you're correct, yeah. Okay. So, were you looking for a younger wife? No. No? A friend of mine. <laughs> And uh, how would you say he introduced me to date in Asia? And oh. I was like, and I'm going, what the heck's that? He said, Oh, there's lots of beautiful women on there. And he kept hassling me, You've been divorced four or five years and you don't have a steady girlfriend. So get your button gear and find a girlfriend. And there's beautiful Filipinas. I went, Filipinas? You know, I never even ever ever thought of that. What was your family's reaction to? you know, meeting someone so young. What the heck are you doing? Are you insane? A young girl, 21 years of age? You're an old man, for God's sake. I'm, yeah, I know. I I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I'm going to take the chance. So you guys met in a dating site, right? It's called Date in Asia. Date in Asia. And... Uh, Jessa, you were 21. What were you doing at that time? Were you in school? Were you working? Yeah, I was in my last year of my education course back in 2008. During the day I met John, we were actually, my friend and I were actually in the computer shop inside the school. Mm -hmm. And we, we <laughs> Yeah, and when our instructor went outside, that's the time we we made the account because my friend my friend wanted to to meet uh she wanted to have a um, yeah. foreign boyfriend and me I was just like oh okay were you interested to look for a foreign boyfriend as well since your friend like hey let's look for a foreign boyfriend. Yeah intention of having boyfriend during the time because that was the family rule as long as you are still studying no boyfriend are mm -hmm. allowed it wasn't intentional right. foreign boyfriend online <laughs> okay so it was just it just happened because of your friend so the friend was the culprit so uh john what were you doing at that time i mean you were 59 were you still working no, actually, I, I more or less retired when I was 55, and I was hovering around the house, you know, instead of calling it retired, I was retarded, you know, don't, I don't know what to do, where to go, but it was complete boredom, you know, all, <laughs> all these friends are bugging the heck out of me, why don't you have a steady girlfriend? I said, well, they're all snobs, you know, like, around Canada, you know. To me, they were snobs, you know. Did you know anything about the Philippines? Not a mm -hmm. thing. It was one friend of mine. He kept, like, the same guy that says, why are you still running around, no girl, steady girlfriend? He says, my buddy's married to a Filipina. He met her in Canada. I says, really? And? He says, she's beautiful. She's 
so nice and family oriented. And he says, you got to try and meet a Filipina girl because they are unbelievably sweet. And off I went and I tried it, you know, mm. and here's the result. So, John, what was your first impression of Jessa? Well, when I seen a picture, I was like, whoa, that girl is beautiful. And I said, oh, you're an idiot. She won't talk to you. You don't know far. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go here. <laughs> then I says, ah, what the heck? I'm going to write. And it's funny. When I'm writing, she must have been typing at the same time. That was like, Phew. I'm like, oh my God, she answered right away. I was like, my God, somebody up there is looking after us. <laughs> and you know, the reason why also I got interested talking to you, it's because of my English. I was going to use him to practice my English. <laughs> See, me method in her madness. <laughs> so how long were you guys chatting first online before John decided to visit the Philippines? We met on April 26, 2008, online, and I'm in a panic. Oh, my God, she called me. Oh, my goodness, she, she wrote to me. Oh, wow, I was like running around in circles, you know. So I went to Toronto, and I went to the Philippine consulate in Toronto. Because oh, I'm Canadian, they expect the it. Day. Yeah, I did it, that next, I did it the next day after talking to her. That's <laughs> it. And I'm standing there with my visa going, hey, Jessa, look, airlink ticket. There's a visa. I says, well, no, I'm, I'm going to September. You know, from April, May, June, July, August, and I then guess. five months. So, Jessica, my question is, um, is this. When you first met John online, were you actually attracted to him? Or were you just looking for someone to take you out from poverty? <laughs> I wasn't attracted you at all when I first saw your oh picture <laughs> online. <laughs> <I'm just being laughs> it was the intention to practice my English. Mm, yeah. <laughs> a private tutor. Mm. And I have no intention <laughs> of making him like a boyfriend online either. I have no intention of having a boyfriend. So what changed? What changed? Yeah, yeah. what changed? I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because um, I think we get to know each other eventually. Yeah, big time. Like, and I, I, I was uh, still in the back of my mind, like, oh my God, she's twenty one. What mm -hmm. are you doing? What? And I'm reminiscing what my family was saying. You're what? You're planning to go to the Philippines? You're coco loco. You know? No. no. I told him about my life and everything that I'm in school. And as soon as he found out that I was in college, I was studying, mm -hmm. the crazy part was like, oh my God, he made an account for me. He made an account for me here in PNB. Canada. I said, go to the PNB bank, I think it's called. Yeah. She says, okay. So I thought he was just. Yeah, I thought he was just joking or something. And I was like, oh, okay. Craziest part was how much is in the ATM, yeah. was in the ATM. It was 2,000 Canadian dollars back in 2008. It almost like more or, or less 80,000. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let me just get this straight. So John, after speaking to Jessa, after two days, you went to a bank, created an account for her, put money in it. Yeah. What were you thinking? I mean, weren't you, weren't you like, weren't you afraid that you might get scammed or something? No, because I was looking at her and listening to her and I sort of analyzed what she was saying. And as you could see, she was truthful, shy, etc. I said, you know what? I'm going to help her. Whether or not she likes the old guy that's talking to her. I want to help her, her and her family. I says, because she explained some situations in her family life, and it was genuine because she was crying when she was telling me. It was it wasn't and it wasn't a, an act. Every every two weeks he was sending, he was sending like more or less a thousand dollars. Yeah. Canadian, and it was a lot of money. And within that five months, I saved 
like more or less 400,000 until yeah, you shit. until you flew to the Philippines yeah. because I, I wasn't touching uh I didn't okay. touch the money I only get like 1000 2000 per week for my allowance my sister and I didn't tell our parents it was a big <laughs> huge secret and he was shocked that the the amount of money the savings you had, was, in the bank <laughs> so john uh do you have kids from your previous marriage yes i have two beautiful girls and a son and they're all older than jessa and that's <laughs> that was the war zone are you out your blooming mind 21 it was tough it was because the on your part yeah as well because the first two years up and down there in the philippines my son drove me to the airport he said dad are you sure you're doing the right thing said, yeah 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 so for the first two years my two girls wouldn't even reply to my emails when they did it was like uh two three weeks after i sent it you get hi everything's fine blah blah no hey dad how's it going buddy blah 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 i was like short and sweet and bite you know some like, god they hate me but and then of course they're listening to the nightmares about the philippines on the news in the west kidnappings in davao kidnappings in mindanao Kid shootings in Northern Samar, you know, murders and NPA and all this baloney that hear on the news. And, and and of course, the government doesn't help by sending out the do not travel zones, you know, which are to me complete garbage. They don't mean nothing. You go by one incident, they say, don't go there. So they are all listening to the news on this side of the world. Yeah. And to me, it was complete bunk. It was absolutely garbage. The country, the Philippines, is number one. Safe, uh, yeah. beautiful, amazing people. And I says, what's wrong with you guys? Why don't you understand why I want to stay here? She's a gold digger. I said, gold digger? I'm on a pension, for God's sakes. What the heck are you talking about? I'm on a pension. And to tell you the truth, P, mm -hmm. for two years when I was down there, my pension was cut off because they couldn't locate me in the mail and my daughter never sent it on to me. So I was cut off from my pension for two years. Zero, zero income for two years. A 20 pesos in my pocket one day. Yeah, that it, it happened. And that's just the truth. 20 pesos. I was broke. And you have to stop the uh, car. I had to park the van and leave it and walk, and walk. home. Talk about a nightmare. I picked but up the foreigner in the Philippines with no money. I said, hello. Yeah. <laughs> see me <laughs> see me standing on the corner with a cup of peso for joe <laughs> and i've got a little thing i want to say to people that are they were bad mouthing us oh she's only up here money you're mm -hmm. rich i don't know she's a gold digger and she's this and she's that i says you know wait, wait a minute last year jess i paid more income tax and i made my pension hello yeah. she's educated she's smart she's beautiful hey i won the lottery when i met her you know and if she supported me since uh oh god since i came here yes yeah, since she came here <laughs> you know my pension my pension barely no, pays yeah, the rent and my car expenses here. rent here is very very, very high. high it's expensive here in canada you guys have been married now for 14 years so obviously jessa already proved that she's not just after your money because she's here to stay with you you know you guys are still together people also are commenting like um it's it's not love it's it's money it's not love there's no, there's love, no money blah, blah blah all we know it, it it was just we enjoyed our uh our company i am happy being with him I re he respect me, I respect him, and we looked after each other those 14 years of marriage. You mentioned that you are still in school, and so John was your first boyfriend, and you yeah. married him. So I was just wondering, it's like, how do you know if you're in love? How did you know I that know. it was fun? You didn't have any prior experiences, so... Oh yeah, I don't Wait, know. Um, I don't all I that. know is that <laughs> I'm happy. I enjoy being being with my husband for 14 years because 
he's a jolly pusong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Mr. Bean of my life. Jessa, what was the first impression of your parents when, you know, John finally visited the Philippines? I told my parents that this guy is very serious. He's coming soon. I told my parents that I have a foreign boyfriend and he's coming next week. <laughs> yeah, two weeks so, prior to my arrival. My father was shocked. Oh my God, they were, they were speechless. Because, <laughs> you know, in the small community, in a small barangay, you know, in Samar, yeah. in Samar mm-hmm. it was like a status as well when you have a foreign boyfriend, right? So mm-hmm. my parents, they're somehow okay with a foreign boyfriend because, you know, pa- there is no par- uh, parents are always wanting their, their daughter or son to have a uh, yeah, better future. Okay. Yeah. To, yeah, to have a better future. And it's all mean, about status. Status. So, and status, status purchase, yeah. Right. Because right. foreigners has a good um, impression with Filipino people, right? I told him, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I want to meet this guy too, and he's coming next week. So eventually, they they accept it. So we picked him up, and then we rented a place with two bedrooms, of course, mm-hmm. one for John and one for us of the family. Soon mm-hmm. as my family, my father met John, my father was smiling and he was happy that mm-hmm. John was kind. Oh, come on! The father would know if the if the man is serious or not, right? So I was looking at my father. He was smiling. He, he was happy. I was like, mm-hmm. So the next yeah. night. <laughs> her, her dad really, he, he had a big yeah. smile on his face every time he looked at me. Yeah. Like, I, he was okay. I, I didn't speak English. And her mother, she just sat there looking at me like, yeah. they analyzing me. And I'm going, oh, Jess, your mother scares me. That's what you mean, scares yeah, but me. The, mother, my the mother, mother's yeah. beautiful. But she scared me of the look she was giving me, like, hmm, hmm. I'm going, mm-hmm. what did I do? She said, nothing. That's my mother. She's just checking you out. So I'm like, oh, okay, okay. But she's our number one woman. They like her you. Yeah. <laughs> Him and I hit it off like old buddies. Yeah. Yet, none of us knew what we were saying. <laughs> well, he had an instant family. And yeah. my family saw his seriousness as well. He was... You can tell, Miss P, even in the first meeting of a new person, yeah. you, you can tell if the person is a good person, right? You actually married Jessa the first time you, you visited. I thought you came back. And so you are really, you know what you want, John. And you are willing to just seize the moment. Seize the moment. Cherish, cherish every moment, yeah. right? Cherish every moment. <laughs> I had to capture her before she got away. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know that it was like so fast. You guys talked online for five months, seriously, you know, talking about being together and such. And then you married, you flew to the Philippines, John, and then married Jessa after a month of meeting her in person. Were you guys ever, you know, afraid that this marriage might not work because you didn't spend enough time together to get to know each other when i met him it was just it was just amazing <laughs> yeah there's there was no hesitation like oh my god but of, of course after we got married the problem was the other people mm. you know i was 21 and then people started talking she's behind just, our back yeah. that oh what is she doing with the old man and everything she's educated she can just have a job and then i found out that john is can't have kids yeah. anymore yeah. plus plus it was the other people because i was i was young and sometime you listen right from the marites the chismis <laughs> that what i'm doing he's old after mm-hmm. after my third child in my previous marriage uh we said that's it three kids and uh, i went and got the you know vasectomy and and he never I, told I, me I, I didn't even didn't even enter my mind to say that well i can't produce kids with yeah. you that was the downside that was the, that was about the downside marriage. of our marriage but yeah. at the same time it was almost like oh because ooh, you know filipina having a kid is a big thing. That's a big thing, yeah. <laughs> it was not discussed 
before marriage that um, you already had the vasectomy? It never entered our mind because it was done so long ago. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't even think, honestly, God, I must have been dumb as a brick because I didn't even think about it. When did you tell Jessa that you can't? Well, it wasn't until one of her aunts yeah. questioned it. A year and a half afterwards, you know. I, honestly, I, like I say, I was dumb as a brick. I was like, oh, my God, I never thought of that. Because it happened so many years prior. John, um, I believe the reason why you have to go back to Canada first was because of you need medical attention. Yeah, my knee, yeah. Okay. So, Jessa, how long have you been in Canada now? In Canada in 2020. And yes, that's, I applied for PR. And I applied around. for permanent residency status. So what do you think about Canada? Well, first of all, I had a, that culture shock, of course. It was so different. Everything is so wide. Everything is fast. <laughs> Everything is fast. Everything is cars, not people. Like in the Philippines, I was shocked. In my first year here, I was looking forward to the winter, of course. I was so excited. But then the second one, I was like, no way. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not looking forward for any winter time anymore. It's just cold. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, but so far it's good. The water is clean. The air is clean. There's so many trees. Oh, I, I love Canada now. <laughs> I just love, uh, I just don't like the, the winter time, the winter season. The nature here is amazing. Oh, the nature is amazing in Canada. You guys go out there and then do you get any, you know, stares? Do you hear negative yeah. opinions from people, from Canadian people? Did you ever um, encounter a Karen? Yeah. I mean, about- well, not a Karen. There's a male version of Karen. There was about seven of them in the shopping mall. <laughs> and we were walking down through the mall. And it was an indoor mall, long hallways. And there's, uh, you know, you hear somebody's behind you. I turn around and look, there's about seven guys behind us. They're all in their ages about, they're all around 30, 28, 30 years of age. Some are in 20s. 20, some <laughs> mid 25, you know, but you can see they're up that age, you know, college and beyond, you know. So, like, hey, chink, chink. They call her chink, like Chinese. I turn around and look, and who the hell are you calling chink? I says, that's not right. I says, she's a Filipina. And even at that, if she was Chinese, that's an insult to a Chinese person. Shut your mouth and watch what you're saying. That's my wife you're talking to me. I said, button your lip. And they were like, oh, Jesus, this guy's standing up to seven of us. Wait a minute. And they all started, whoop, and they, they backed off. And just, oh, especially the oh, older oh. women here, they're conservative. Oh, God, they're all Because snobs. when we're outside, when we're doing our groceries, I'm oh, clingy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, You know, she's hanging you... on to me. You know. <laughs> I think she's scared of all. <laughs> no. No, yeah. Some women, <clears throat> older women here are very conservative. And yeah. They look at us like. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Is caregiver? Caregiver. <laughs> caregiver. <laughs> they thought I'm a caregiver or a nurse or yeah. some something. <laughs> We visited one friend one day, and <laughs> she has this visitor in, in her house. Then she looked at us, and <laughs> our friend explained to the visitor that, oh, this is Jessa and John, and they're married, and he's divorced, and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly this woman stand up, and then she was like, you know what? My husband... We got divorced because of a Filipina. My husband left me because of a Filipina. That's you your know, problem. She said, we're straightforward people here. We don't take shh <laughs> from our husbands. I think she right away she thought John left his wife because of For me. Jessa. Yeah. Do you get comments from people uh, saying that Jessa might just leave you for a younger yeah. doctor or something like that. I've heard that. I've heard that. We know a lot of medical staff here and we know a lot of people and we know a lot of Filipinos and they all say the same thing. Oh, he's an old guy. What, what are you going to do if some young guy comes along and he 
wealthy and he's nice looking and he's a professional, he's a doctor or a pilot or somebody else. Yeah, well, it's up to her. Free world. She wants to go. Mm, She's free yeah. to go. A lot of guys try and hit on her when I'm there. And, you know, especially like, I, in the Philippines. Yeah, a lot of guys try and hit on her. One guy, I was walking down the street. What the heck was that? Chuck Loban? That idiot came up and grabbed your arm. And he's going, hey, hey, I want your phone number. I want phone number. And I'm about three stores ahead of her. And I turn around and see this guy and go, what the hell is he doing? So I walk back and say, hey, buddy, what are you doing? That was a crazy guy. The guy was a little bit dolly dimple. <laughs> You've been him. through a lot of... Uh... Stupid things. <laughs> My next question for you guys, though, um, again, John, you can answer this. Have you two discussed the future for Jessa after you're gone? Or is it a subject that you both avoid? Yes. Yes, I've discussed it with her. And she didn't like it, but I said, look, uh, we've got a beautiful big piece of property and a brand new house. And she'll get a pension from my pension, not 100%, but she'll get, I'd say, 50 60%. It's not a lot of money. <laughs> you know, she's getting 50%, 60% of my pension. She's the one that's making money. I need to work. I, I need to see what, save. Up. I introduced Jessa to all my friends. And, this is Jessa. She's my young sugar mama. <laughs> and they go, what? <laughs> and yeah, she looks after me. She feeds me. Well, that's me. the current situation you know. now, Miss P. But you know what, John, after hearing your story, your life with Jessa, you did everything I advise foreigners not to do. But congratulations. I'm happy it worked out so well for you guys. It's the respect. I, I yeah, guess. respect and gets we, respect. We look after each other. Yeah. You look after me in the beginning. I look after you now. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that you guys really love each other, especially, you know, you, Jessa, the way you look at John and the way John <laughs> looks at you, it melts my heart. Oh, by the way, guys, before I forget, if you want to follow Jessa's adventure, Jessa's got a YouTube channel, right, Jessa? Yeah, it's called Jessa K Channel, guys. Please support our channel. I love creating videos since I, I've met you. <laughs> follow her adventure. It's like the... Um, it's like the book of their lives. You and John, your adventures together. Well, guys, again, thank you so much uh, for sharing your story with me. And as always, I'll be back on Tuesday with something totally different. So nice. bye for now. Bye, Jessa. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye, Miss P. Thank bye. You. So, John, last advice for guys who are looking, you know, for their second chance. Maybe they're looking at the Philippines to look for a second chance in life to find the love of their life. What would you uh, advise them? Um, well, don't go following what I did. If you think about it, I'm kind of like Pocahontas, who bridged the gap between two very different cultures and tried to bring peace and understanding to both sides, while at the same time, dating a foreigner. All that I ask for my diplomatic efforts is that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. And while you're here, check out some of my other videos too. And no, you can't poke my hauntas.